Hey guys, Gaudium here, and welcome back to the channel. With the release of Sunbreak coming closer and closer, I think it's time to share our builds which we use for speedrunning. We will categorize them into spread bows, pierce bows, and rapid bows. Timestamps are available in the description. As a reminder, these builds are made for speedruns. They are optimized to kill a monster as fast as possible without any defensive skills. Also, we have recently started using legal modded charms since we all know that the talisman grind in Rice is, well, abysmal. With that said, use these sets more as a guideline and choose skills you are more comfortable with. Now, before we dive into the set, I want to clarify some core skills food skills, and switch skills. Arrow type up for spread, pierce, and rapid, bow charge plus, and at least some points of constitution are mandatory. These are the very first skills you want to have. Using the right shot type skill corresponding to your bow gives you a 20% raw damage increase on level 3. You don't want to miss on that. Bow Charge Plus and Constitution should be self-explanatory. The next important skills are Stamina Surge, Reload Speed, and Elemental Attack Up. With more stamina to use, you can deal more damage. Reload Speed is a great utility skill for bow. With only two level 1 slots, you can switch between coatings instantly without interrupting your combo. Elemental attack is again self-explanatory. Try to fit at least level 3 elemental attack into your set. That is the threshold where the percentage increase starts. Up next are weakness exploit and critical boost. With bow being a ranged weapon, it's not too hard to focus on the weak spot of a monster. Weakness Exploit rewards you with an infinity increase which lets you crit more, activating critical boost for a significant increase of damage. These are not necessary, but a good and relatively cheap way to increase your damage output. Most armor pieces already have either of them. Lastly, attack skills and other utility options. Attack Boost, Peak Performance, Evade Extender are all usable and viable for bow sets if you have enough slots, that is. Make sure to get the core skills first. As a disclaimer, don't ever use Critical Element. It's a trap! 50% it's trap. more elemental damage translates into most cases into only one or two more damage per arrow. You can use those slots way better. And don't sleep on affinity sliding. 30% affinity for 30 seconds, and it's a level 1 skill. If you can use it efficiently, take it. After affinity sliding ends, my fighting style Palico usually performs Rousing Roar for 30% affinity, which means I have no downtime. With the skills now covered, I'll quickly go over the foot skills. Dango Booster, Marksman, Glutton, and Fighter are very useful for bow. Be aware, Dango Fighter does not work if you have Constitution 5. If you want to know more about that, check out this video made by our friend Titus. He explains in depth how stamina works in Rice. Make sure to leave a like. Dango Booster and Marksman are more damage focus skills, with Booster increasing your attack by 9 and Marksman increasing your raw damage by 10%. It's noteworthy that Marksman is a chance to get those 10% damage, but it's not guaranteed. For the most part, we only use three switch skills, Absolute Power Shot, Dodge Bolt, and Aerial Aim. 
Normal power shot is usable as well in certain situations such as instances where it's very hard to hit the head or a KO can be achieved with other means. Charging sidestep and focus shot are the two switch skills we rarely use if ever in a speedrun. Dodge Bolt is a counterattack that rewards you with bow charge level 3 if you successfully evade an attack. In addition, it performs a melee attack. It is, in our opinion, better than its counterpart switch skill. Another plus for us is the distance you cover with Dodge Bolt is minimal, reducing the risk of going out of position. Focus Shot is something we never looked into simply because Aerial Aim is the more dominant skill for us. Some important things about bow are the arrow pattern, motion values, and other bow-specific traits. Talking about the shot types first, you can see that all three have different arrow counts and motion values. As you can see on the screen, spread has the lowest motion value with 10 per arrow on the highest charge level, and pierce has the highest with 12 per arrow. The reason why spread is better than rapid despite having a lower motion value is the arrow count per shot. With rapid 5 shooting 4 arrows and spread 5 shooting 5, spread deals more damage overall even if the single arrow damage is lower. Next up are buffs and traits. In Monster Hunter Rise, there are specific buffs for bow which only affects this weapon class mainly speaking about coatings. Close range increases the damage of arrows by 20% and the damage of melee attack by 32% multiplicatively but reduces the critical range. The melee damage buff comes in favor of dodge bolt. Close range plus only increases the damage dealt with melee attack by 39% compared to 32% from the normal version. It does not increase arrow damage. Power coding increases the damage by 35% per arrow. Status coatings like Para, Poison, and Sleep do not increase arrow damage, but provide the status the coatings are named after. The last points are Charge Level and Critical Distance. Charge levels have a specific multiplier attached to them that increase the raw damage based on the level charge. Here are the multipliers. As you can see, Charge Level 3 provides 50% raw damage increase and Charge Level 4 a staggering 70%. This is the reason why Mighty Bow Feather, or Bow Charge Plus in other words, is so important. Lastly, Critical Distance. If you play bow, you see a crosshair when aiming. Maybe you notice that this crosshair changes based on how far or how close you are to your target. If it glows orange, then it means you are in a critical range and you deal maximum damage. If you are too close and your crosshair changes to yellow, then you lose damage. Too far away and the same thing appears, but more drastic. It's better to be closer to your target than too far away. There are ways to change critical distance in your favor. Namely, close range coding, spread type shots, pierce type shots, and the skill ballistics. Visory will now tell you about the bow sets. Now, it's time to talk about my bow sets. You will see empty slots on them. Those are utility slots for decorations I use frequently like affinity sliding, recovery up, flinch free and others. Let's start with the most used arrow type, spread. As a quick note, on the sets with peak performance, I switch the skill for stamina search or other useful skills if I use feline adrenaline. What's a better way to start off than with the bow which elevated spread bows to the next level? Camellios. Before update 2.0, spread bows were not really usable in a speedrun scenario. Rampage bows with the spread ramp up skill only reached spread level 4 on the highest charge level. 
and there was no bow in the game with spread 5. Nearly all the time, spread bows were out damaged by rapid shot bows. That all changed when the other Nanus attacked. Spread bows also have a lower critical distance multiplier, meaning you can stand right in the monster's face and not lose a single point of damage to critical distance. Another upside of having one more arrow per shot is the additional KO buildup when using absolute power shot. The downside is that you have to be close in order to hit all the arrows and have critical range. Monsters can do more often and your position is way more important. That also makes it hard to hit aerial aim if you're not used to the range and spread. Being the best raw spread ball, the Demon's Guidance is a beast. Very high raw, a level 3 slot and access to power as well as para codings make this ball one of the best in the game, shredding monsters in minutes. For the ramp up skill, I use attack boost 3 to get an increase of plus 8 attack to my base attack. Overall, this bow is very versatile and can be used for almost every monster, but mainly for those who have a higher raw hit zone compared to elemental or if there is no other good option. Some examples are Almodron, Baryov, Magna Malo, Valstrax and Zenoga. Next up is the destroyer of the Wrath family, Dreadnought Dragonhawk. With a level 2 slot, power codings and very high dragon element, it completely demolishes Raffian Raffalos as well as their Apex versions. Wyvern Exploit as ramp up skill increases your raw damage against pretty much everything by 5%. I opted to not use peak performance on this set and instead max out dragon attack. As I said, the Rustrex bow is mostly used for Raffian, Raffalos, Apex Raffian and Apex Raffalos. The last spread bow is the Azure Arrow Soaring Dragon. Coming from the USJ event quest, this bow is packed with goodies. The first and only water element bow I use. With 20% affinity from the get-go, acceptable water element and a level 3 slot, it wrecks everything weak to water. The option to either use Water Boost 4 or Affinity Boost 4 makes it even better. Usually I use the Water Boost and get to 100% affinity with the Particle Rousing Roar buff. This bow finds usage for Teostra, Antonath and Toby Kadachi. Next in line are the Pierce Bows. Pierce shots are different from the other two types since they only shoot one arrow instead of multiple. This one arrow on the other hand hits up to 7 times on the way through the monster's body. This is good and bad. On small monsters it's more advantageous to not use Pierce, since it can tick all 7 times. This shot type has the highest motion value, and paired with the multiple ticks it's a very good option for big enemies. Using absolute power shot on this kind of boss is not always a useful option. Having only a few hits on the head each shot, it's often better to either pair it with exhaust coding or not use KO entirely. Staring Night Flight is our first Pierce Bow. 40% affinity, a level 2 slot, power and close range plus codings, good raw. What else is there to say? Even if other Pierce Bows might have a higher attack stat, the Nagakuga Bow is still usable because of all the other stats it provides. With close range plus codings you can easily stay fairly close and still retain the maximum damage. With the melee buff from that coding, Dodge Bolt is even better on this bow. As ramp up skill, I use attack boost 3, but for the clever ones among you, you can use Silkbind boost if you inherit it from the Bishatten bow by using it on that one before upgrading it to the hidden bow 1. Night Flight is not used in a lot of matchups, but it's still a very versatile pick. Some uses are for example Nawa, All Mother Nawa, Ragnar Kadaki and Basil Geese.
Up next is the Fire Pierce Bow, a Ragnar Torch. Made from Ragnar Kadaki, this bow combines high affinity, high fire element, Pierce 5 on both charge level 3 and 4, provides a good variety of coding options and on top of it, a level 2 slot as well as 2 level 1 slots. With this Berserker in your hand, Fire Weak Foes don't stand a chance. Attack Boost 4 is my preferred ramp up skill, but Fire Boost 2 is a viable option. This bow completely ignites Camellias and can be used for Ibushi, Nagakuga, Almujon, and Gosharak. Daoa Sagitari is the third PS bow I use. With high element, the usage of a variety of codings and PS5 on the last charge levels, this monster of a bow just melts Ice Weak targets. The obvious choice of the best ramp up skill is Kushara Daoa Soul. Being one of the best ramp up skills in the game, it increases affinity by 25% after the first shot and increases affinity by 30% after hitting 5 shots. Bow in general is attacking very fast, so as long as you can keep the onslaught, you will never lose this buff. Some of the monsters this bow is used for are Diablos, Apex Diablos, Laser Geese, and Rotten Kadaki. Our first Rampage Bow. You thought you didn't have to get them, right? Sadly, Rampage Bows are still mandatory for some matchups. With the option to change the Rampage Bows however you like, you effectively only need one if you have enough defender tickets to change every time. For this alteration, I use Attack Boost 4, Dragon 3, Firing Pierce, use Power Coding, and use Exhaust Coding. The reason why Exhaust Coding is because it not only lets me use the coding, but also gives me a bit more raw on top of that. Other than that, there's nothing really special about Rampage Bows. The only monster it's usable on is Ibushi, but it can be used on Nawa, All Mother Nawa, and Camellios. Thunder Pierce is basically the same as Dragon Pierce, just with the difference that I use Thunder Free and Thunder Attack. Shocking. The same set and the same ramp up skills. Even if Dragon Pierce is not used very much, it's a different story with Thunder Pierce. Its victims are Mitsutsune, Apex Mitsutsune, Nagakuga, Tsuratodus, Kushara Daoa, and it can be used for Basil Geese. The last category of bows are the Rapid Shot bows. After the rise of spread bows thanks to the introduction of Camellias, Rapid bows fell under the rock in speedruns. Nonetheless, they are still usable and for some runners a preferred option. For me personally, it's a shame that there are no good rapid bows which can compete with the immense impact spread and pierce have. An advantage above the other two shot types is that rapid shots are not scattered like spread and you can be closer to the monster unlike pierce. It's easier to hit weak spots consistently and with 4 arrows per shot, absolute power shot is a viable switch skill. There's not a lot to say other than that. So let's dive into the sets. Oh shit, here we go again. Rampage bows are sadly the best when it comes to rapid shots. Built similar to the Pierce variant, Rampage bows for rapid only change the firing Pierce to firing rapid in the ramp up skills and the element ramp up. Since every build is the same, and only the element changes, I decided to show the fire version to give an example. I'm not very familiar with the matchups for rapid bows, but I guess it can be used in almost every situation. The Abyssal Gale Bow is a rapid bow that can compete with other Rampage rapid bows. The set is made the same way, with only the weapon changing. Compared to the Rampage counterpart, the only difference is a shift of 5 raw and 5 element. This is not enough to make it better, but it's also not worse. In general, 
you will deal the same amount of damage with maybe hitting 1 damage more or less per arrow. Dragon Boost 4 is the ramp up skill of my choice. More of a last resort pick, the Heaven's Mana as compared to the Rampage Water Rapid set for the reason that it has slightly higher affinity, 1 level 1 slot and access to power as well as exhaust coatings from the start. Dealing less damage than a fully damage oriented Rampage Bow, this version of a Water Rapid set has the option to lock down the monster with power and KO. Sadly, with the release of the UJ Collaboration Bow, Heaven's Mana is outshined in every aspect. I still wanted to throw it in here. The last bow is more of a bonus. Every runner, or at least the majority I've spoken to, dislike Rampage. Just for that, I made the Blast Rapid Bow, and what's better to use than the Bow of Light and Courage? Not only can you repel monsters with ease, not worrying about cannons or anything like that, but you also gain experience towards the stronghold level with each blast proc. It seems like a tiny boost you receive, but every new monster has a reset blast threshold. That means you will have at least one blast status in every monster, and those stack up quickly. On top, if your rampage has an objective called inflict status ailment, then every single blast application counts towards that. With the ramp up to your soul, each blast block deals more damage, saving your coatings, time and stamina. In this speedrun this set would never find use. But I still wanted to share it since we all know that it's sunbreak, vantages are back and you can't prepare enough for that. That wraps up my speedrun builds. Or does it? Some of you might be wondering, but why use Ice Pierce and Basil Geese and why do you have weakness exploit if you can't use it? Excellent question. Before we end, Let's talk about special cases. In some cases, you have to adapt and change the set a little bit in order to match the target you're fighting. I specifically talk about four monsters Kushala Daora, Nagakuga, Ragnar Kadaki, and Basil Geese. For those monsters, the best gunner hit zones are difficult to reach consistently so an efficient use of weakness exploit is not possible. The two sets I made are without weakness exploit and are for those foes explicitly. Kushala Daora and Nagakuga are most weak to thunder. Both have acceptable elemental hit zones throughout their body, so my choice for them is the thunder pierce ball. Since we don't have any affinity on this set, it's better to go for pure damage. The one point of weakness exploit comes from the Azure Age Haori. Don't worry about it. Ragnar Kadaki and Basegis are a bit more complicated. It's the same problem as the last two, but instead of being weak to thunder, Ragnar and Basil have an ice weakness. The best bow to deal with them is Daora Sagittari. Why? Kushala Daora Soul. Even without weakness exploit, you can get up to 45% affinity just by attacking. This is the reason I use critical boost on this set. On top, affinity sliding gets another 30% for a total of 75%. If you use a fighting cell particle and it activates Rousing War, you have 100% crit chance everywhere you hit. Pretty good, right? Basic Geese is the most special one. Being more weak to Thunder, but also sharing a relatively good weakness to Ice, both Thunder and Ice Spear sets can be used. I prefer the Ice version since we have power coatings, and in my opinion it's a bit more damage on our side. That marks the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it and you learned something. Again, these are my speedrunning builds. They are not necessarily made for normal play. Keep that in mind. Big thanks to Tyrus and Gaudium for helping me with this project. If you have questions, comment down below and we can talk. I'm Visory and I will see you in the next one. Bye!